Hey, y'all, what's up? What's going on? My name is James. Hi, everybody, and I'm Natalie. And we are the Hancocks. And thank you. I first want to say thank you for watching. Uh, we do appreciate you coming on here and just taking a look and seeing what we're talking about. Um, if you want to, please, please, please share, 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 share and hit please. that bell button so that every time we post something, you'll get a notification. So subscribe, share, hit the bell, do all of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So now we got all of that out the way. This is the broken windshield. Hey. Yeah. Welcome <laughs> to the broken windshield. Now, honestly, this is just a YouTube channel that God placed on our heart to do for people who are married or who even aspire to be married. You could be engaged. You might not even have anyone right now. But this is what God placed this on our heart. And this is a place where people can engage um, each other on different topics from marriage to surrounding relationships and marriage, family, anything concerning, you know, relationships. And we encourage feedback, so please comment below your thoughts, any topics that you want to hear, we're open to. So please, please, any suggestions, anything, we would love to hear from you all. Why the broken windshield? Yeah, why I'm the broken sure windshield? You, I'm sure people want to know why we decided to name this the broken windshield. It was and his idea. It really was. It was my <laughs> idea, but... Um, it actually really was God's idea. Um, you know, we decided that we wanted to kind of do something, you know, outside of what we normally do. You know, we are entrepreneurs, we have businesses and things like that, but we wanted to give people value, um, that we didn't get any type of return from. And we thought this was the best way to do it. You know, we see so much stuff surrounding marriages and relationships and everyone has their opinions about what they want or what a relationship should look like and things like that. And I'm not going to necessarily say that we're different from that, but um, we just kind of wanted to share our experiences, you know, with people because I believe that if someone would be transparent and open about what they have going on in their relationships and their I lives and the how life. they maneuver and navigate it through hardships and things like that, that it will actually help other people. So that's what we decided to do. So when we came up with this idea, when we got this vision that this is what we wanted to do, we were kind of like, okay, God, give us a name for this that was going to represent what this was represent who we were, you know, give us something that was kind of catchy because we didn't just want to get on here and say this is marriage therapy 101. That wasn't the goal, you know. <laughs> just give us something that make people want to engage and watch and see what's going on. What he did kind of was gave, showed us our attention to our windshield, right? And I'm, I'm going to talk about this. So <laughs> <laughs> the, windshield. The, win the broken windshield is just that, right? Because our windshield and our car it's has been um, the place where everything was just kind of thrown up on. You know, the windshield has caught the blunt force of arguments. It has caught the blunt force of disagreements, frustrations, pressures, pain. Everything that a married couple can actually experience because it seems like for whatever reason, we used to have the bulk of our arguments in the car riding around doing stuff. So the windshield pretty much caught all of it. I'm sure that it would have a lot to say if it was in here talking. So, <laughs> so, um, God was kind of like, you know, the broken windshield kind of would be cool to name it because our goal really is for your relationship to not look like our windshield broken ultimately broken and abused but there's beauty in this because even though it was all broken cracked up and things like that it didn't fail us you know the windshield is still there we're still dry when it rains you know it still holds up in the weather still keeps us warm on the inside of the car so there's beauty in that because just because you have a couple stains, spots on your relationship, just because you went through some trials and some tribulations doesn't mean that's the end. You know, it most certainly can continue and most certainly can even be stronger than it was before. So that's really what the broken windshield is about, y'all. Just really sharing with y'all what our experiences have been, what we have learned from them, and, you know, just really giving y'all value. Hopefully, it'll help. And just the ups and downs of marriage, because I feel like our generation don't do marriage well. No. The first sign of trouble is like, we out. We out. 
I even had a conversation with my brother about marriage. And his thought on marriage, it was, I was just looked at him because his thought was marriage should be a contract. A whole contract, just like you renew. Just like you renew <laughs> your lease or you renew contracts. Because he said his theory was it would cut down on divorce rates. And I'm like, how? He was like, if it's a contract, when you get married, you decide if you want to do a one year, two year, three year. And when the contract is up, if you decide you don't want to be married, don't renew it. I'm just like, sorry, that's not realistic to me. Mm -mm. That is like, marriage is sacred. Like, in the eyes of God, like, why even get married? Right. So, um... That brings us... That brings us to what we're really going to talk about today. <laughs> um, we are going to talk about the prerequisites of marriage. And, you know, so many people desire to be married, like what you said. People desire to be married, um, or people are already married and didn't really understand the work that needed to be done on a personal development level before saying I do. Um, and that's kind of what we want to talk about today. What should, you know, what should we be talking about? What should, what should we be or who should we be? What type of work should we have done on ourselves to make ourselves presentable for our spouse? You know, and we kind of want to talk about this because Natalie and I, we did not, um, we didn't have personal development before we got married. That's just going to be the real honest right. truth. You know, we, there were some things about us individually that caused us to have friction early in our marriage because I had my way of how I wanted the marriage to go. Natalie had her way of how she wanted the marriage to go. Um, not to say that we didn't care about how God wanted it. It was just we had our own kind of way of what we wanted. And it was based off of our own experiences that we've had personally, based off of our upbringing and things like that. That's just not really right. And not realistic. You know, it wasn't realistic. It wasn't correct. It wasn't the way that we really should have went into getting married. And it did cause friction early. So we want to save some people from that. You know, um, and even if you're already married and you didn't do that, you know, there it's not too late. You most certainly still can go through your own personal development. It's actually really cool, actually, to see your spouse going through their own personal development and getting better on a personal level because the beauty in that when you're in the marriage, it's amazing. So <clears throat> we kind of want to just kind of talk about that Um the prerequisites of marriage. And the first thing we really want to touch on is brokenness. brokenness. So, as far as like brokenness, first off, when you get married, you become in one. And what I learned early on, what I learned, what we learned early on, I guess y'all can speak for both of us, in mm -hmm. our marriages, even though you, you go through different things prior to meeting your spouse, prior to getting married, mm -hmm. and Sometimes you think you've done the work, but the reality of it, you haven't. A lot of times we bury things mm -hmm. and we cover up things. And those things that we bury and cover up, we've been broken from. Mm -hmm. And so then you meet this person. Yeah, I met this awesome person. You get together, you get married. Not knowing that they're also broken. Mm -hmm. So when you have two people coming together and it's like we're both broken, it's kind of like, and then once you get married, everybody's gone home. The wedding is over. It's just you're left together. Mm -hmm. And then all of this stuff start unraveling, unfolding, and it's just like, oh, my God, all hell just broke loose. Mm -hmm. But the reality of it is because you both were broken. Not saying that when you get together, you're going to be these this perfect couple or perfect people because you're not. But to me, and looking back then and now, it's a lot of things that, personal development, I wish I had it, and mm -hmm. a lot of stuff I wish I had to let go of, because I brought a lot of that baggage into my marriage. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, that's, I know I did. I mean, I, for one thing that I have learned um, in our, throughout the course of our marriage is that um, marriage pretty much it challenges the person that you are. You, It's a requirement that both people change to be to come one okay because mm -hmm. you're you've lived a life as a single person you're the only one that made decisions for yourself 
You made them, you didn't have to check with nobody. You didn't have to ask for permission to do anything. Mm -hmm. It's whatever you want to do. You did it, you know? You right. know, you spent your money on what you wanted to spend your money on. You went where you wanted to go. You hung out with who you wanted to hang out with. And, you know, you went to the parties that you wanted to go to or whatever you did, You it was on you, you know? You didn't have to check that with anybody. And then when you come into a marriage where it's now two of you who are trying to do one life together, and it's kind of like I'm coming from not having to check on in, check, check with anybody on anything to now abruptly I have to run everything by this other person right. and I have to kind of respect their feelings based on you know uh, feelings of what they what it is that we're trying to do I have to respect their feelings and sometimes it may be a no and it might be something that I really wanted to do, but my my spouse is not with it. So it's really a no because it could cause friction. So that in itself, just that piece in itself can be very difficult. And if you haven't done your personal development, you know, to come into a marriage saying, yo, we're two people, we're going to do this together. You know, if you're approaching a marriage with a, a mindset and the thought process of, you know, this is still my life. Can't nobody control me. Can't nobody do nothing you, uh, about what I want to do. If I want to do it, I'm going to do it anyway. Bringing that into the, your marriage can easily cause problems just because it's two people that are trying to do one life together. And it's very important that we do our self-development. You know, it's very important that we look at the things about ourselves and, and take a really good hard look about yourself and what about myself would make somebody not want to be with me what about right. myself would make somebody you know be like you know what i ain't dealing with that deuces i'm out you know and it's important that we change those things about ourselves to make ourselves a whole people you know it, marriage when you're approaching marriage and when you're getting married you should be two whole people coming into a union Shit. together because you're coming together as one but it, you should be two whole people you know it is not your spouse's responsibility to fix issues with you prior to them that's just my opinion you know i'm that's just how what i believe and it it's helped us you know we didn't do that we brought stuff to our marriage. We were not whole people when we got married. I had past stuff that was that happened that I hadn't dealt with. Natalie did too. And then we brought that to our marriage and, you know, it caused friction. It caused friction. We had some issues early on because I had my way of how I wanted to do stuff, you know, and I didn't really understand what it was to compromise. That's a huge word when it comes to marriage is compromising because I didn't understand what that was. I didn't understand, you know, give and take. It was, I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm a man. You ain't going to tell me what to do. You know, it's mm -hmm. like for real, that was the reality of it. You're not going to tell me what to do and I'm going to do what I want to. And it was not good for us. And that was the same way, you know, I was because I was single. I was, a, I also was a mother. So I made all the decisions in my house. I was a single mother and this is how we rode. This is how we rocked. This was how I ran my household. And she was older than me. Oh too, yeah, and I was older than too. him. So <laughs> and I had I had also experienced a lot more than he had experienced. So that had a, that played a lot too. But it is it's about compromise. Whether you it doesn't matter whether it was kids prior to the marriage, after the marriage. It's all about compromise and finding that balance. And finding like what works for you all and then sometimes like and I also had to realize like when you're broken and it hasn't been fixed everything about that person is going to get on like the smallest things mm -hmm. the smallest things that they do are, is going to like really get on your nerves so it's like one of them things like, mm, but deep down, it's not even them, mm -hmm. it's you. Because you had something that happened to you in the past and you never, you buried it, but you never really got over it. And because you didn't get over it, if they do something that reminds you of your past, mm -hmm. then it's going to, oh my God, all hell is going to break loose. Mm -hmm. And deep down, it's like, and they didn't, and it's not fair because then you lash out to them. They didn't even know. Right. 
I mean, and I, I think it's important that people heal from like past trauma in relationships and things like that. Um, because you bring that stuff to your relationship and then like what you just said, you know, somebody does something and you didn't heal from the past relationship and you're now in this new relationship, but then they do something that reminds you of what the other person did and now you out or you got issues or you shut down or you put up a wall or whatever. And the reality of it was that person is not perfect just like the person before him or her wasn't perfect either. Everybody is going to make some mistakes. Everybody's going to have something with them that mm -hmm. you just ain't going to like. You just going to have to deal with or it just might be something that y'all would have to work through. But nobody's perfect, you know. So, But if you didn't heal from past traumas, you're going to be like, oh, well, you just like such and such. And such and such did this to me and you this starting to look like them. You starting to do this. Oh, so you such and such lied and because I don't trust what you saying or I don't I have trust issues and I don't trust what you're saying, I feel like you a liar too. Well, I'm not such and such, you know, and you have to go into that and you gotta kinda heal from mm -hmm. that stuff because you don't wanna bring that into to the marriage. You know, yeah. it's very, very dangerous. Um, marriage or relationship period is very dangerous to jump from one relationship to another relationship without getting all of that residue from the past out of the way you got to mm -hmm. clean that stuff out you because do. it would really really be harmful to the relationship that you're in now especially if it's something that you uh, want to grow into okay. a marriage you know if you want to grow into a life with this person you know you got to make sure that you do the homework and the personal development of getting rid of old relationship yeah. trauma, you know, because it will definitely solve, uh, it will definitely solve problems if you get rid of it. Right. You won't have them, you avoid them, you know, if you can just get rid of that stuff, you know, and that also kind of brings us to trust issues. Yeah, because we're six years in now, and trust me, we, the last year and a half has probably been spent on personal development. If I wish I had known this six years ago. Right. But and it wasn't that. I'm not saying that we shouldn't get married. But I mean, because we followed God and we followed Him to as far as like our marriage and we did go through premarital counseling. It was just that stuff from our past we thought we had dealt with, but really we suppressed it. We hid it. We mm -hmm. covered it up. And so it's like, so when you have those moments or you have those arguments or then all of that stuff starts coming up. It starts coming up. Mm -hmm. And when it starts coming up, it's like, it's not you. It's me. Because I never dealt with this. Mm -hmm. I should have dealt with I kind of suppressed it. I thought I was over it. But I'm broken from this. Mm -hmm. I'm broken from the past. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a relationship that you was in. Any bro it, Brokenness could come from your childhood. Mm -hmm. It could come friendships. from friendships. It could come from anything not necessarily somebody that you was um involved with romantically it doesn't matter you don't have to be it doesn't have to be from it could be your childhood because a lot of people have childhood issues mm -hmm. and i know for i'm not even just gonna say women have daddy issues men and women can have daddy issues absolutely and daddy issues or mommy like any any kind of issues can cause you can break you and cause brokenness mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. bringing brokenness into your marriage is not the way. Right. I mean, and I'm going to be honest. I I didn't deal with nothing before I got married. <laughs> I didn't deal with any of the stuff. Like, I was just taught, you know, my upbringing, it don't work out with this person. Okay, on to the next. You know, it, it really wasn't something that I, I didn't really sit and allow God to kind of heal my heart, you know, put it back together or anything. It was just kind of like, okay, I'm moving on with life, you know. Right. Next person come along, then, you know, we'll just deal with that person or whatever. I didn't really understand what it was to really uh, pray and, and worship God on a healing standpoint coming right. from a broken heart out of a relationship that didn't work. I didn't understand what that was. I never saw that. So... You know, I didn't deal with nothing. I just really didn't. Society has a way of, you know, teaching you, you know, 
don't forget about what such and such did. You know, keep your um, your eyes open when yeah. you're dealing with such and such. You you know, when you're dealing with the next person or whatever, don't forget what the what you went through the last time, and don't ever let it happen to you again. And that's just that's just not right. right. You know, um, we have to heal from that stuff because I went into my marriage doing that, and then Natalie would do something that looked very familiar. Mm -hmm. You know, and I would be like, see, you just like what you call it, you know, and this happened to me and I feel like this is what you on the road. So I would do stuff to prepare for it, right. you know, or she um, now would do it too. do stuff to prepare for the huge breakup. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, we watch movies and things like that and we would do stuff to prepare for it, not understanding that it's really perpetuating the problem. It's not solving the problem. We're not saving ourselves from heartbreak just because you prepare for it. It right. doesn't, it still hurts at the end of the day and you're not solving any problems. You're actually making them worse because yeah. now you move in, now you move in funny. You know, now I really got trust issues because you sneaking and you hiding stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you putting money in different accounts and things <laughs> like that. I mean, and that's detrimental to a relationship. It is. That's detrimental to a marriage. You know, you have to deal with the trust issues. You know, if you're going to marry somebody, you're saying that I'm going to be committed to you for the rest of my life. And whatever <coughs> we deal with, whatever we go through, we're going to go through that stuff together. So if that's the case, you got to be ready to deal with the hardships. Yeah. You got to be ready to deal with the, the stuff about your spouse, your fiance, your boyfriend or mm -hmm. girlfriend that you just don't like if you all are planning a future together. Right. Now, if you just dating just a date, then maybe... You know, it is what it is. I don't recommend that, though. You know, that's to me, it's a waste of time just to date to just date. That might be something we'll talk about on another, another time. But, you know, if you're preparing to do something and to go into a relationship for the rest of your life, you know, you have got to get rid of the old trauma. Yeah. Because they do create trust issues. And it's just hard to move forward when you don't really genuinely trust the person that you're with. Yeah. And you, you know. definitely have, I feel like prior to marriage, it's important that both people do the work, like self-development, like you have to, it's important. It will only make you, it makes you better as a person and not even when you do self-development, not just for your marriage, but it makes you better with relationships, period. Like it makes you better in life just doing the self-development and recognizing who you are. Who God has created you to be. Mm -hmm. Like, it just makes you a better person. And, like, because it's so much baggage. And, like, I mean, I, and like we had trust issues early. It wasn't nothing with infidelity, nothing. It was just because being able to trust. Like, okay, if I tell you this, can I trust you? Right. Can I give you my, can I, do I trust you enough to give you my heart? Yep, that's what it was for us. When it came to trust issues, it wasn't like you, what you said. It wasn't no cheating or nothing like that. It wasn't infidelity. And, and that's another thing. You cannot trust somebody and they don't necessarily have to cheat. Right. You know, um, it can just be like what we said. Can I trust you with my heart? It's like we put, we put boundaries and we put walls up unnecessarily. Yes. Yes, we do. And because we're trying to prevent. Right. That I'm going to trust break. you with this, but I'm not going to trust you with this. And. But you can't be like that. It's either you trust or you don't. And being able to fully trust somebody goes back to doing personal self-development prior to your marriage mm -hmm. and understanding who you are as a person, understanding your identity. Mm -hmm. I feel like as Christians, we struggle so much with identity. As black people, we just we yeah, struggle. Yeah, well, yeah. As Christians, we do. Um, you know, we have the Word of God and... And the Holy Spirit to kind of guide us through that. But as black people, and of course, this show is not just for black people. So if you're not black and you're watching this, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. I'm just saying, well, we just saying, <laughs> but, we're just talking about our culture in general. And another stigma, too, in our culture is don't go talk to a therapist because you're crazy. Oh, yeah. Please Which is not talk to a Go talk to a therapist. I have one. Go. She is wonderful. <laughs> if you're in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, go I most talk certainly to a can therapist. give you her go. credentials, her telephone number. I can give you her mathematics because I stand by therapy. <laughs> it has helped us tremendously. And 
the first thing that I was able to do is admit that I was crazy. Okay? It's not and crazy. That, <laughs> that was the first thing. No, I, was I, able no, to I just feel like therapy is important because it gives you a safe place to unpack all of this, which is in, when you unpack, that's part of self development. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't unpack to your girlfriend. I'm not saying that you can't unpack to your friends, but it's kind of like if. You need somebody else. Mm -hmm. L look at it like this. You need a professional sometimes. Mm -hmm. And therapy is very important to your self-development. It is. So it's okay to go to therapy. You're not crazy. It's only to help I you. I was crazy. No, you was yes. not. Quit saying that. I had some issues, y'all. <laughs> I mean, every, I, I, everybody has issues. The yes. thing is, how do you deal with your issues? That's what's important to me. Yeah. How it do is. you deal with your issues? That's important. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and guys, it looks like we about to uh, wrap this up because we are out of time. Um, you know, we want to keep this kind of short. We want to be on here forever talking to you. It's so much information that we can talk to you about relationships and things like that. And we're going to get into all of that stuff. And we're really going to have to part to this because we didn't even finish everything. No. So, I mean, we really want to talk about expectations and everything. So we're going to part to this. Um, and we're just going to kind of wrap this up. First thing I want to say, though. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hit the share button. Hit the like button. Um, any comments, drop any comments below. We're listening. We're open to any suggestions. All that. All that good stuff. <laughs> and I also want to add, too, you know, my wife and I, we touched on it as we were talking. But, you know, we are Christians, first and foremost. We believe the Bible. We believe Jesus Christ. That is our stance. Is that to say that this is only for Christians? No, it's not. You know, I hope that this brings value regardless of what your faith is, regardless of whether you believe in God, whether you believe in Buddha, whoever. You know, we all are doing relationships, and right. it's very important that we um, do relationships correctly. You know, I believe that, you know, God created marriage. Um, it is the first institution that he did create, and that is our belief. Um, and that's what we stand on. So a lot of our beliefs and things are going to be rooted in scripture. But that is not to say, if that's not your belief, that this isn't for you. Right. It most certainly is. I, I don't want to single out anybody just because we've drawn the line to stand and that's our stance. But um, I hope that this brings value to you. I hope that you are able to get something out of this um, that we're doing. This is a vision that God has given us to be able to bring value to the world, to be able to share our experiences and be a light to somebody because marriage is, is under attack it at is. the end of the day. Marriages are under attack. Relationships are just done wrong, just yeah. completely. You know, um, there isn't any sanctity in relationships anymore. I remember being when I was a kid growing up, you know, the first question you asked was, do you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? And the answer was yes, you know, they kind of moved on. But now, no, it's kind of like, I don't care. You know, we still right. do what we do. They, they ain't got to know. And that's just not right. You know, at the end of the day, everybody wants to be respected. And I believe that um, that type of attitude just only further perpetuates the issues that we have surrounding relationships. So hopefully you guys gotten some value out of this. Um, it is our prayer that you did. Yes. It's our prayer that, you know, this is not the end all be all. This is, you know, these are our experiences, our opinions. It may work for you. It may not. We're just sharing what we've experienced and what we've learned through our experiences with you in hopes that it can help you. And that is the timer going off. So that means that we are out of time. <laughs> time. Bye. Okay. <laughs> so till next time, this is the Broken Windshield. Again, my name is James. And I'm Natalie. We are the, the Hancocks. Hancocks. And y'all have a good one.